Next, we're going to Central America. El Salvador, Guatemala and Honduras have brought criminal charges against more than 700 members of cross-border criminal organisations, primarily the MS-13 and the 18th Street gangs, in a US-assisted effort, according to the US Department of Justice this week. And the DOJ and our law enforcement partners in Central America are committed to continued collaboration in locating and arresting gang members and associates engaged in transnational crimes, according to William Barr. Now, the charges resulted from a one-week coordinated law enforcement action under Operational Regional Shield and a DOJ-led initiative to combat a transnational organised crime that brings together authorities from El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico and the United States. Now, tackling transnational human smuggling networks and gangs, including MS-13, was a top priority for Donald Trump. And prosecutors in El Salvador this week filed criminal charges against 1,152 members of organised crime groups in the country, and again, primarily from MS-13 and the 18th Street Gangs. And the National Civil Police captured 572 of the defendants on charges involving terrorism, murder, extortion, kidnapping, money laundering, human trafficking and human smuggling, amongst other charges. In Guatemala, authorities executed 80 search warrants, arrested 40 individuals and served 29 arrest warrants against people already in custody, all of whom are members of the 18th Street Gang and MS-13. Guatemalan authorities also seized drugs and a firearm and filed charges for extortion, illicit association, conspiracy to commit murder and extortive obstruction. Honduras, in a one-week joint operation, resulted in the arrest of 75 MS-13 and 18th Street gang members and five police officers and the execution of over 10 search warrants. Good stuff, you know. A lot of those MS-13 and 18th Street gangs are connected to agencies on our own soil. Yes, you, Mr. Obama, and your FARC, Gorillas and MS-13, I might add. You're not the only one. But the less of those types of criminals on our street, the better. But we also have to address the social conditions that creates these type of people. Because zero has been done to fix things in that way globally. We have to address the social conditions that creates these gang people. And Elon Musk has upset a few people this week in what appears to be a continuing push to eventually becoming a Chinese company. Tesla will soon be producing its third generation electric superchargers in China in addition to vehicles it already manufactures there. Now the company said it will start producing the chargers in 2021 and it plans on investing 6.4 million in a new factory to help make its third generation of chargers called the supercharger V3. Now, it's kind of no surprise Musk is eager to expand in China, having been quoted as calling the country smart and hard-working back in August of this year. And the Tesla CEO, who has made himself billions off the back of US government subsidies and also the US taxpayer, took 
to a podcast over the summer to make it clear exactly what country his allegiances lie with. And on the podcast reported by CNBC, he called the people of China smart and hardworking, while at the same time calling American citizens entitled and complacent. And he specifically called out both New York and California. Uh, No surprise there. And those are states whose taxpayers have literally funded Tesla's business with massive tax breaks amounting to billions. Now, some people will denigrate him for this, but he does have a point in some aspects. He does. Plus the continued shambolic way this country is being ran. Businesses from a business perspective are better off at this point elsewhere to not only survive but also thrive. And the drain will go on unless drastic actions are taken to make America self-sufficient as close to 100% as possible and that way we can create our own jobs. America has to start a program of self-sufficiency. Where are we next? Pentagon. Congressional Oversight Commission overseeing COVID-19 relief funds, none of which goes to the people, I might add, um, pulled in the Defence and Treasury Departments this week over a $700 million loan to a troubled shipping company. The Treasury and DOD offered the loan in July when the company YRC Worldwide was reportedly worth just $70 million and they loaned them $700 million. Oh dear. And had been sued by the Pentagon who then lent them $700 million over overpriced shipping costs. <laughs> Let me just recap that. So the Pentagon was suing this company for overpricing, which is a laugh coming from the Pentagon, and then gives $700 million of American taxpayers' money to bail a company out worth $70 million. That makes sense. Or is it another of the hostile takeovers of companies which then goes to and comes under the term private contractors? That's 700 million that clearly the Pentagon had floating around. Although one has to ask, where did that funding come from? One can ask, but rarely does one get an answer back from those involved in it. But that 700 million could have gone to landlords and small businesses who are losing money hand over fist and could have saved some jobs and homes. I know, common sense again. But the bipartisan commission overseeing the funds from the 2.2 trillion CARES Act said both agencies had failed to provide adequate answers on the matter and in some cases had raised further concerns with their responses to earlier inquiries. The DOD has yet to provide the Commission a satisfactory explanation for how YRC is critical to quote national security unquote (laughs) there's that word again we all know what that means and the committee said in its most recent oversight report noting that there were three larger shipping providers offering similar services critical to national security means that the YRC is in some way owned or ran by the CIA just saying 
So the DOD did not even consider whether the, the services it obtains from YRC could be obtained elsewhere, the report continued, raising further concerns about the favourable terms of the loan and the likelihood that the stake the Treasury took in the company would be compromised in the event of a default. And the Commission is concerned that the Treasury may have put taxpayers in a precarious position. And the reports also hit the Defence Department's responses to previous inquiries, noting that the response was delayed and at time contradictory. Contradicting my contradictions again. Well, the Pentagon said it did not seek an alternative provider, but also that the lack of an alternative provider justified its, quote, national security, unquote, designation of the company. And the Commission finds that the DOD delays are inexcusable and its answers incomplete. It's unbelievable. The American military and its entourage, that includes the Pentagon, is the biggest waste of money ever. I'm sorry if that upsets people, but it's a fact. Near one trillion, yes, you heard that correctly, one trillion dollars a year. And what do the American people get in return? Nothing. Freedoms, some will cry, really, freedoms is an illusion like the American dream. You have to be asleep to believe it. One trillion a year. That would feed every American and take everyone out of poverty. Just saying. You can't eat planes, ships, or bombs. President Trump played his um, Let's Look After Number One card this week, the Trump card, which we did warn about, and apparently has discussed with advisors whether to grant preemptive pardons to his children. Oh my. Also to his snake in law. Uh, uh, yeah, snake in law. And to his personal lawyer, Mr. Guiliani. <laughs> and he talked with uh, Mr. Guiliani about pardoning him as recently as last week, according to two people who were briefed on the matter. Mr. Trump has told others that he is concerned that a Biden Justice Department might seek retribution against the president by targeting the oldest three of his five children, Donald Trump Jr., Eric Trump and Ivanka Trump, as well as Ms. Trump. I thought it was Mrs. Trump. Hmm. Anyway, she's a puppet stooge, a gift from Mr. Putin. <laughs> Oops. Um, ah, Ms. Trump's husband, Jared Kushner, a White House senior advisor. Now, Trump Jr. had been under investigation by Robert Mueller, the special counsel for contacts that the younger Mr. Trump had had with Russians offering damaging information on the Hillary Clinton during the 2016 campaign, but he was never charged. Mr. Kushner provided false information to federal authorities about his contacts with foreigners for his security clearance. It's funny how the trustee can take mine away, but not Kushner's. Um, I guess I digress. But he was still given security clearance despite lying by the president anyway. Kushner, as predicted, was your downfall, Mr. Trump. 
the very fact that he provided false information for a security clearance should have had him on charges of a national security risk. But the problem is the Israeli lobby wield ridiculous power in this country and Kushner, their puppet boy, walks free. You want a warning? Watch out for Kushner Ivanka 2024 and Israel's Cohen's plan will be complete. Now the nature of Trump's concern about any potential criminal expo exposure of Eric Trump or Ivanka Trump is unclear, although an investigation by the Manhattan District Attorney into the Trump Organization has expanded to include tax write-offs on millions of dollars of consulting fees by the company, some of which appear to have gone to Ivanka. This is just wrong on many, many levels, and this type of skullduggery of one rule for them and another for the people has to stop. Thank you.